the Lord Jesus is the only reason for our existence. The only reason. Love the Lord, my beloveds. Love the Lord. When you see the Lord Jesus in the next life, you will then and then only understand no one can overcome this man. And I'm talking about the man, not the divine. The divine, forget it. He can't <laughs> forget about that. I'm talking about this man. No one can overcome him. He is that awesome. He is that perfect. He is that mighty as the man, son of man. No one can overcome this man, let alone his divinity. Impossible. Impossible. So whatever you're going through now, whatever issues you have whatever problems you have whatever obstacles you're encountering whatever challenges you are facing remember jesus christ is way way greater beyond and above all the challenges put together why are you worried the doctor said you have three weeks to live who cares The doctor said you have three weeks to live. Who cares, my beloved? So what? Whether I live on earth or move on matters not. Matters not. Why are you so afraid of leaving this world? Now, whether we wish to remain here or not, one day I'll have to leave whether I like it or not. And wouldn't you want to be with the love of your life sooner than later? Wouldn't you want to be with the Lord Jesus forever? Enjoy his holy presence and be filled with joy and happiness forever. There, there will be no more tears. There will be no more aging. There will be no more aching. There will be no more pain, sorrow, no more weakness, no more. Everything will become anew. So what? I live or die. As long as I live and I die for the Lord. Doesn't matter. Believe me, it doesn't matter. One day I'll have to go. I'm not here forever. Only the Lord is. So we need to seek the Lord Jesus. We need to beg Him to have mercy on us. To bring us back to Him. To show us the way, for He is the way. Live for the Lord. And enjoy the moment with the Lord. The people the Lord has given you, love them. The people the Lord has brought them your way, embrace them. The people the Lord has put you in the midst of them, pray for them and look after them. It doesn't matter they give you a hard time or not. It doesn't matter they are nice to you and sometimes not so nice to you. It matters not. The Lord gave you these people. Maybe to you this person is not smart enough, is not beautiful enough. Who cares? Do you think you're smart or beautiful? You're not. All of us are the same. Every single one of us have, have, we have in us good things and bad things, beautiful things and not so beautiful things. But what matters is one thing. Focus on the Lord and embrace everything the Lord gives you. Even the partner you're with who is a pain in the neck Thank God for that partner. And when I say partner, I mean your husband or your wife, okay? No boyfriend, girlfriend. I will kill you. I have red belt in karate. I chop you.
Today I was listening to one of the lectures this good old bishop was, <laughs> was preaching. I laughed at the way the bishop was talking, <laughs> like me. <laughs> because I said something and I cracked up laughing today. I said, man, this guy's funny and he's, he's, he's kind of <laughs> crazy as well. That was funny. Yeah. I was actually talking about uh, doing a facelift in Istanbul. And I said, this woman changed from Khadija to Mariah Carey. I just laughed at this one. <laughs> How did I come up with this? I have no idea. <laughs> like on the spot, poor Khadija to Mariah Carey. What a great, you know, illustration. Unbelievable. So I really laughed at the bishop, the way he spoke. It was very funny. So you see? You can laugh at yourself as well sometimes when you listen to yourself. The Lord Jesus is the only reason for our existence. The only reason. Love the Lord, my beloveds. Love the Lord. I want to keep you more, but you know. Just... One day, I was dying to become a priest. I'm a bishop at the moment. Apparently very well known in the world, but not accepted by some churches. But it doesn't matter. It's all good. So I was dying to become a priest. All my hope, all my wish, every thought was circulating around this. I want to be a priest. The day came. They announced it that I will be ordained a priest. Now I'm saying it for you. I'm not talking about anyone. Please don't take it out of context. I am saying it for you from and learn from this living example before your own eyes. I benefit nothing from it. But I want you to know one thing. How the Lord deals with every single one of us. He taught me this. And I'd like to share it with you after the Lord's permission. Will you, Lord, allow me? I was dying to become a priest. It was announced I'll be a priest. Flying from joy and happiness. I wouldn't even sleep. I don't care. I'm becoming a priest. There was two days left for my ordination. I got deposed from the church by the highest rank in that church. Two days left to the ordination. I got deposed. For one week, literal one week, I ate nothing. I drank nothing. I did not move from my room or from the room. It's not my room. It's the Lord's. Everything is the Lord's. I don't own nothing. I am owned by the Lord. And everything I have is the Lord's. One week, like a statue, from the biggest shock I received in my entire life until that moment. Every dream, every hope just trembled down right before my own eyes. As if I was killed, but I'm not dead yet. I became speechless emotionless, you name it, destroyed, destroyed big times. After one week, my God rest her soul, my earthly mother, mothers are wonderful, you know, my sons and daughters, respect your mom and dad, respect your mom and dad. They are not perfect. Sometimes they will do things that are wrong or say things that are wrong, but I can assure you, they are a treasure. You will never understand that treasure until you lose that treasure. You'll never understand. So my mom came and son, come on, please come out, eat something, drink something. I was gone, finished. Years went by. To be more sort of accurate, about six years, I was ordained a priest by the same church. But at that time, I didn't want to be a priest. 
I fought against the Lord badly, not to be appraised. I begged him, leave me alone. I don't want it. I said, Lord, I don't want it. I'm not worthy. Find someone else. I don't want it. There are, I'm sure there are many other ch children of yours that are much more worthy than me. I'm a piece of wreck. Find someone else. Two months struggled. Two months struggled begging the Lord, fighting the Lord, saying no. Couple of days before I give an answer, the Lord came. Not a dream, not a vision, real. I'm sitting during the day. He came and spoke. He said, stop fighting me. I have my hand holding your neck. I've grabbed you from the neck. Stop fighting me. You cannot win. Give up and do what I want you to do. This is from me for you. You will be a priest. This is Jesus' wish. When I heard his voice talking to me this way, I surrendered. The entire struggle came to a full halt. I became a priest after six years. He taught me a very valuable lesson, very valuable, and I'm sharing it with you. He said, you know why I allowed them to depose you from the church? It wasn't them, it was me. You need to learn how the Lord operates. You need to trust. You need to learn how to trust the Lord. He said, it wasn't them who deposed you, it was me. I allowed them to depose you. I am in control. Yes, he is the king of kings. This name is written on the rope and on his thigh. Whether naked on Good Friday or whether glorified on Sunday resurrection, I am always the king and I'm always in charge. So they can't depose you. I allowed them because I am the king of all kings. I rule no one else. The Pope cannot do anything unless I allow it. So, you know why I allowed them to depose you? Because I wanted you to learn one thing. And it took six years for you to learn. I understood. You know what it was? He said, you were not ready earlier for me to give you the rank. I already gave it. I already gave it to you, but it was not the right time for you to have it as yet. But it's guaranteed you will be a priest and no one can stop it. But if I had given you the rank at the time, you would have looked at the rank and forgotten about the one who gave you the rank. But now that I took you to the desert, and I taught you well in that desert. Now you are ready to receive the rank because when I'm going to give it, you will never look at the rank, but you will look at the one who gave you the rank. Now you're ready. And let me see those who went against you. Let me see if they're going to stand against you when I say, now you are to be ordained. I'll make them come and ask you to be one. And they did. They came. matters not who cares i'm a bishop i'm the who cares i'm the pope who cares habibi my darling my centerling let me tell you this it doesn't matter you are the head of the church you are the cardinal you are the bishop you are a rich man you are the, this or that it matters not what matters is are you with the lord or not are you so i thank you lord i do not look at the rank anymore even though it is holy because it comes from the holy of holies jesus christ is the high priest and he gives his priesthood rank to whom he chooses and gives to but i more so i thank the one who gave me the rank therefore lord when people come in the millions and in the billions and say, Bishop, you're this, uh, we love you, we adore you, you're wonderful. No. 
You can say that, fine. But for me, I've learned the lesson. It is the Lord, not me. It is Him who is glorious, who is beautiful, who is caring, loving, and He is merciful. It is the Lord who is reaching out to you. I don't care about the position. That's why throne, no throne, for me it's the same. Accepted in the church, rejected by the church, for me it's the same. You love me, you hate me, for me it's the same. I will love you. It doesn't matter, Habib Albi. I'll make you tabbouleh, or baba ghanoush, and Italian pizza, it matters not. You love me, you don't love me, I love you. Believe me, it, nothing is worth it in this life, because at the end, the grave is waiting, and after the grave, judgment by the true judge, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Find the Lord, look for the Lord, search for the Lord. Don't look for nobody else. Don't look for nobody else. It took six years. The Lord said, you were too eager to become a priest, dangerous. Not mature enough. I'll give the rank when, you're, when you are more mature. So now, Bishop, we love you. Bishop, we hate you. I love you. You're beautiful. You're ugly. I love you. I know I'm beautiful in the eyes of the Lord. That's what matters. Who cares you call me ugly? The Lord says, he's my son. Hallelujah, baby. <laughs> Learn. Learn how to trust the Lord. Everything he does is good. Even when it is painful, it is good. When I go through the operating theater and I look at the surgeon's knife, it's a scary sight to look at. But that very knife that is going to cut me wide open is the very knife that is going to be the reason for my healing. The Lord operates, He cuts, extracts strange things in your body. But then He stitches and heals the wound. After healing, you're recovered. No more pain, no more weakness, no more crying. No more. It's all good. On the rope, and on the thigh was written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh my. Man. Jesus is amazing. The Lord is amazing. 